Hello everybody. So I've briefly talked about how to use Unity events to help you set up UI and tutorials and game object events, but how do you use them programmatically and why would you want to? So this ship is something I set up using entirely the basic uh, interface here where I would just be like, okay, well I need this event to do more stuff, so I'll drop more stuff into the Unity event that's listed right here in the inspector. But there are times when the inspector's not going to cut it for you. For example, let's say we're going to make a game about wandering a giant space derelict junkyard. And that means we're going to be spawning in random ships and space stations all the time. And we want the player to be able to go over to these things and slap controls on them. Now the player has a limited number of controls, uh, and you know, you've got to figure out what you want to put on each piece of object, but basically I want this button to trigger this one engine, to toggle that one engine, and not this one over here. How do we do that? Well, since the engine doesn't exist until runtime and the button doesn't exist until runtime, there's no way for us to connect them using an inspector. There are a lot of ways to do this. We could use static events, uh, we could use C-sharp events, uh, we could use static functions, but how do we want to do it using Unity events? We're already using Unity events for a lot of our stuff, we might as well keep using Unity events, because that way it'll be a nice flawless integration. We'll be able to just switch between more scripted events and less scripted events on the fly. Well, in order to create a Unity event, we need to know two things. We need to know what Unity event is getting invoked and what it's trying to invoke. So in this case, we've got something that already detects which engine we're pointing at. And we've got something that spawns in these buttons when you right-click. Now, just how do we connect the two? So if you are not up on scripting and you're not sure how to do things like these raycast detections or these right click to spawn things in, you're going to want to learn that stuff first. Uh, this is how to use Unity events in scripting, not how to script. So the way we want to do that is we go over here into the player interface and we have right here, this is where we spawn in our droppable interface. What we'd like to do is we'd like to have that droppable inter interface turn the, uh, turn the engine on and off when we click it. Sounds good? We know what engine we're connected to. We're connected to the engine highlighted. So we also know what event we're going to do, toggle. But we have to tell PDI to do that, not, not just call it. Uh, otherwise, we're just toggling it whenever we right click, and that's not what we want. So in order to do this, we actually have to use a kind of thing you might not be aware of called a Unity action. Now you can see there's no Unity action here. That's because it's in the UnityEngine.Events namespace. So Unity action A equals new Unity action. And then you have to pass it a delegate. What does that mean? Well, you have to pass it some function it can call. Uh, the big downside of these uh, Unity actions in scripting is there's no easy way to set it up to actually throw arguments around. Uh, it's possible, but it's really a stretch, and it's not really that great. So we'll have to send it some kind of void call. Uh, what kind of void call do we want it to do? To do? Um, Highlighted dot toggle sounds right. What do you think? So then we say PDI dot button dot on click dot add listener. Hey, so basically we go to the Unity event we would like to add a listener to, and we add a listener to it. Shall we see whether this works? Doesn't seem like we spawned any warnings. There's lots of warnings because of Unity's recent obsolescence of virtually every piece of scripting in their store, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and see whether this works. Hey there, Engine 1. Woo! Hey there, Engine 2. You okay? Woo! Wah! Alright, so one thing to note is that these engines have been set up here in Scene View to trigger this. So when we trigger an engine, it triggers this. Now note that our button doesn't know anything about this. It's just part of the event chain. But I figured that this would be a nice, easy way to show you how easily these things can be uh, swapped in and out. There's no difficulty in, um, uh, in trying to manage it. Uh, if you've got some events that are set up in your uh, scene view, they work fine. If you've got some events that are set up in your script, they work fine.
Now there are some problems with this. If I were to save the game and then load it using some kind of serialization method, this would no longer be connected to the engine properly. Uh, these do not serialize correctly, at least not as far as I know. So be aware that you're going to be biting off more than you can chew uh, if you have to try and save and load these, uh, these connected events that get spawned together. Um, you're going to have to do some kind of gymnastics with that. But this is certainly feasible and fun, so go ahead and give it a shot. And if you happen to know of an easy way to save and load these Unity event listeners, let me know. Bye.